Greetings. This is Doc Ock coming to you live and direct tonight from Black Facts Headquarters Central with another installment of Doc Ock at noon and nine. Now, this particular person had a life that was so full that I'm going to do the unusual and we're reading him on reading stories about him on both platforms simultaneously or back to back, whichever. Uh, because I was reading about him on the um, at noon, and now we're going to introduce the young folks to him at nine o'clock. But before we do that, let's go ahead and do the needful. Let's do our proverb, and the proverb for today is. Those who think nothing of themselves cannot appreciate others. And that's a proverb from Liberation Narratives by Haki Matabuti, a.k.a. Don L. Lee. So let's see what we have for a black fact today. All right. I think we're doing that one right there. Yeah. Name the black man who laid out the plan for D.C. city streets. And that happened way back in the day. We'll come, we'll come right back to that as soon as we finish our story. So let's get jiggy with it. We're in the book today, Great Negroes Past and Present. Now, the company that made this particular book that published it was Afro-American publishing, I think is what it was called, Afro-Am, Afro-Am Publishing, but they got bought out a few years ago. Yeah, Afro-Am Publishing out of Chicago, but they got bought out a few years ago, and when that bought out, not only did their name change to a certain degree, but the title of the book changed also, but I still recommend the old version of the book, not the new version of the book, because the new version, they took out all of these excellent drawings of the people. Yeah, the brother that um, put, was the uh, publisher, um, what's his name, Russell Adams. Yeah, he was a real serious, fine artist. So I believe when he sold the company, he didn't give him the rights to the, to the artwork necessarily. And so therefore, that would have been a separate deal. They didn't want to buy it. So they, they had to excise all the, the photos. But in this old version, but you can still find around some of it here and there. Um, they do have all the, the pictures in it, which are really, really good. They had a lot of other interesting things, too. They had um, posters. So they had posters with the same artwork and the information on it. And then they also had um, crayons. They had crayons with all different kinds of skin tones, the appropriate skin tones for different people so that you could whatever shade of black they might happen to be, you had a crayon to color them. It's as opposed to just having one crayon in the box that says flesh. And if you're not that color, something's wrong with you, which is not true. So let's get on with the reading. James P. Beckworth, the time period is, let's set it up, 1798 to 1867. And it's the, uh, the first setting is Fredericksburg, Virginia. But we got a little intro piece that we're going to read before we get to his actual story. America's westward expansion, its most colorful saga, has traditionally excluded black pioneers and adventurers. Now historians are admitting that thousands of Negro men and women played various roles in the exploration and settlement of lands west of the Mississippi. There were more than 5,000 black uh, cowboys who rode the ranges from Texas to Montana. Most were ropers like Bill Pickett, the dusky demon from Texas, while others were horse breakers, wranglers, cooks, trail bosses, etc. Some even became law enforcers like Major William Brady. Hotel proprietors like Cheyenne's B.M. Ford, and even swindlers like Dodge City's Ben Hodge, 
or straight out outlaws like Texas or Texas's Cherokee Bill. But many were heroic frontiersmen ranging the Rocky Mountains and Plains as hunters, trappers, and Pony Express riders. And that is describes James P. Beckworth to a T. Not a cowboy, but a frontiersman, or you like, as people like to say, mountain man. So one of the most famous mountain men was James P. Beckworth, sometimes called Beckwith, a Virginia-born mulatto blacksmith who in 18 and 23 joined William H. Ashley's Rocky Mountain Fur Company in St. Louis, Missouri, leaving the expedition in 1825. He lived with the Crow Indians for six years where he acquired a third wife because he already had two wives. So he picked up a third wife and a reputation as a warrior and a horse thief. Now, I haven't heard anything about this horse thief part, so I still got to do more investigating about that. He was eventually made a chief. In a short time, Beckworth's exploits rivaled those of the famous Kit Carson, one of his associates. Although historians ignored his detailed life story published in 1856, in 1844, he had joined Kearney's forces in California had participated in the Mexican War, 1846 to 48, joined the Colorado Gold Rush in 1859, and had fought in the Cheyenne Wars of 1864. He died in 1867 near Denver while on a peace mission for the government. It was said that he had been poisoned by members of his adopted people. The average black Westerners were ex-slaves who had come to Texas with their masters and when the Civil War freed them, settled there or moved north to Colorado and Wyoming, helping in large cattle drives. When gold was discovered in the Black Hills, hundreds flocked to the Dakota territories to become miners. In the campaign against the Indians, Negroes could be found on both sides as guerrillas, warriors, or scouts for the Comanches, Sioux, Seminoles, and Creeks, or as infantry, infantrymen and cavalrymen in the four Negro uh, regiments established by Congress in 1866. While much of the period has become the myth adopted, adapted to movies and television, the neglected but indisputable fact is that black men and women were an integral part of the winning of the West. Now, just by way of reference, I'm going to also just go back here to the beginning of this book. I always like to check the date. Yeah, this was originally published in 1963, and then they recopyrighted it and uh, updated it. And this is the third revised edition, so dated 1984. But for the most part, that's why it's also set it in the time here of great Negroes, because we were still calling ourselves Negroes back in 1964. Uh, second point I wanted to make about the uh, story is that the, where was that at here? Oh, four Negro regiments. So those would have been the Buffalo Soldiers. And if we get a chance, we, we may talk about them next week, because next week, We'll continue talking about African adventurers, but next week we're going to talk about those people who rode on some kind of mounted steed, either on camels or on horses. And we have some stories we're looking at from Africa, but we've got stories that we're looking at from right here in the U.S. also. So we're going to do a little uh, contrast, compare and contrast. But meanwhile, that is in a nutshell that's the story of James P. Beckworth. And it's really in a nutshell because we didn't couldn't didn't have time to really get into any of the uh, detailed things. We did some of that on the on our 12 o'clock show. We got into a few details, but I have yet to figure out how him and his crew 
were able to capture that bear and take him back to civilization and then give him to an, a, a major in the U.S. Army. Now, that part I still haven't figured out. Somehow, I can't seem to. I heard it because uh, I was listening to this uh, book on tape and I heard it on there, heard him talk about it, but I can't seem to find it in the printed version of the book that I also have. So, um, but I, I could tell there's some very, there's some very interesting stories about James P. Beckworth. We're doing, this is an introduction, so we're just scratching the surface here. There's much, much, much more that we've left for you to find out without a doubt. Now, as for our question of the day, our black fact of the day, the answer to the question, uh, name, hmm, thought I did that one already too. Let me see. No, couldn't have done it. Okay, name the black man who laid out the plan for DC streets. And the name of that person is, drum roll please, boom, Benjamin Banneker. And that happened in 1790. And the city, the original city that he laid out was 10 square miles. 10 square miles is all that DC was. A very, not a very big town, but big enough for a start for the federal government. And then last but not least, um, oh, that's it. All I have to say other than that is don't be a loon. Make sure you stay tuned right over here on YouTube and on Facebook. If you haven't done it yet, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe so you can become part of our tribe. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure to go ahead, give us a like, give us a share, show everybody that you really do care. And in the end, we still need more support. We appreciate all the support you all have been given, but we still need more support. We're trying to achieve a goal by October 20. This is part of our fall fundraising campaign. We call it our 2020-2020 campaign. We're attempting to raise $20,000 by October 20. So we only have a few more days left. So go ahead and send in those donations. The link is right below on Facebook. If you don't, if you're on YouTube, just go to our Black Facts webpage. Go to the donation page. You can make your donation there. The webpage is www.blakfacts.org. Make sure to drop that C because we don't put a C in black because we want to stand up straight and tall. We don't want to be all curled up like a C. If you get, if you hear, if you catch my drift, then you'll see what I mean. Meanwhile, all you little children out there, let's go ahead and put those heads down on your little pillows, on your little beds, close those little eyes, and wait for the sun to rise. And when you see that old ball, that old sun come up in the sky, and you feel those sunbeams on your eyes, that's when it will be time for you to rise and shine. Hopefully today, will, tomorrow, will be really fine, just like today was, if not even better. See you tomorrow. Remember, we are doing our weekly review at noon for the children. So we've got a lot of stories we did this week for the children, and we'll be reviewing some select stories. We don't can't necessarily get them all, but we can get some select stories in, and I think you all would enjoy them. So make sure to tune in at noon and check it out without a doubt. Meanwhile, this is Doc Ock at noon and nine signing off. Peace out, y'all.